Hi, let's create a data logger with Raspberry Pi using DS18B20 temperature sensor. Now, DS18B20 is a very interesting temperature sensor which is very accurate in operation. All you're going to need for this experiment is a Raspberry Pi 4 or 3 module, DS18B20 temperature sensor itself. We need one pull up register to work with the sensor, breadboard, and some connecting wires. So this is the kind of sensor I'm using, which is a metal case sensor. You can directly connect fire to it. It has a very nice accuracy of 0.5 degree plus minus from minus 10 to plus 85 degrees Celsius. And the whole range that it measures or the whole temperature range is minus 55 degrees Celsius to 125 degrees Celsius. It's a digital sensor. You don't have to convert any A to D or you don't have to do any A to D conversion with this sensor. And it works on a protocol which is called as one wire. <coughs> now this is the connection diagram that you need to do. This is the circuit diagram that you need to do. So connect VCC to 3.3, ground to ground and then connect data line to GPIO 4. This is a GPIO 4 pin of Raspberry Pi 4 or 3, whichever model you have. And then connect a pull up register of 10K between data and VCC. This is important, otherwise the sensor will not be recognized. Now that's all there is to the connections. Important is to understand how do you enable this sensor? How do you use this sensor into Raspberry Pi? So there are some steps which you will have to follow and I'll show them one by one. First of all is you need to enable one wire run interface into Raspberry Pi configuration. Second is you need to configure a particular file by adding some text into it. Then you reboot and then again you follow few steps. Don't worry, it's not that difficult at all. It's very simple. Let me show you. So this is the VNC viewer I have of my Raspberry Pi, which is in operation. All you need to do is, first of all, as I said, the first step is enable the one wire interface on Raspberry Pi. So to do that, simply type a command sudo raspi config. This will open the Raspberry Pi configuration. Go to the third option, interface options. Then here, go to this option, one wire. Just hit enter into it and you will see if your one wire interface is enabled or not. For me, you can see it is enabled. If this is like this for you, all you need to do is use your arrow key, make it yes and hit enter. That's it. And now you can finish. That finishes our first step. We have enabled the one wire interface. Now second is edit boot slash config.txt and add this to the end of the line. Now how do you edit? When you edit, normally we use a very simple text editor called nano. Now I'll again use sudo nano, then forward slash, what's the name of that file? Slash boot slash config.txt, boot slash config.txt. Now all you need to do is go to the end of this file, the last line and simply put this line, dt overlay is equal to w1 hyphen gpio. You can see I have added it here, dt overlay hyphen w1, sorry dt overlay equal to w1 hyphen gpio. Now that is done, you need to exit nano, to do that just use control x. It will ask you to save the file, just click Y at that position and you will exit that line. Now at this point, what you need to do is, you need to reboot your system. Now I won't reboot for this video because I have already done that. Now what you need to do is, you need to run some commands and check if the sensor is connected or not. Now let me show you. What I'll do first of all is, I'll go to that location which is expected sys bus w1 devices okay so let me navigate there cd slash sys slash bus slash w1 slash devices here you need to run several commands one of them is sudo mod probe w1 hyphen therm then another one is sudo mod probe w1 hyphen gpi you will run these two commands and after running these two commands, you will simply hit enter into this location. Which location? Sys bus w1 devices. And then 
you should be seeing this 28 hyphen something something now please remember if you don't see this it simply means that your connections have been mistaken now this is my setup my sensor is connected over here and if it is not properly powered on the data is not going well then only what will happen is you will not see this number over here but if you see this number over here it means your sensor is properly connected to raspberry pi that's all you need to do if you see that number it means you're connected you're good to go now all you need to do is simply look at the code that i'm giving you and try to run it this is a data logger code so what we are going to do here in this code is we are trying to read the temperature read the date read the time then try to create a csv data log write these entries into it and then see the output so what we have done in this code is we have read the date then we are reading extracting the date in one variable time in another variable then we are reading the temperature with this line we are just taking the temperature part it just gives you two values degree as well as fahrenheit i'm just taking the degree part out here and then we open a file then we are writing the date then comma then time then comma then temperature converted into string or text and then new line over the period of time if you keep running this code it will create a series of log for your reference let me show you the output of this code for that i'll first delete my previous log file i don't want that now run this code you will see the prints whatever i have printed over here okay i have printed the whole string i don't want that i'll just print my temperature value here run the current script this is the temperature 29.875 30 30 i have kept the delay of one second ideally in any data logger you will not keep one second delay you will keep it at least five second 10 second or even 60 seconds we don't want data coming every second and just for the sake of experimentation let's try to change the temperature let's try to do something with that temperature let me open my cam so that you can see it I'm going to do something formidable, which should not be done, but that's the easiest way to see the temperature rising. So you have both the screens open. We'll see I'm directly connecting flame to my sensor with a lighter. Okay. Now let me see that. Can you see here? Temperature has risen to 49, 59, 65, 66, so on and so on. It will keep rising up to a point and then it will start coming down. If I again put heat onto it, this is a very bad way to put heat. I'm directly putting fire, but it doesn't harm it, not for a short period. 86, 91, it will reach up to 92 something, and then it's coming down. So this is the experiment. This is my hardware setup. This is my software setup as you are looking at screen and turn off the camera. I'll turn the code or I'll stop the code. And since this code is saved into home location, the file log.csv will also be created in home location. Let's open that file log.csv. Here you will see, as you can notice, date, then time, and then the last value is temperature. You will see all the values here, the risen values, the fallen values, everything. If you simply copy this file to your computer using the VNC file transfer method, let me send files, not this way. So you can just take this file over here onto your computer and then you can observe it using uh, an Excel or any kind of spreadsheet software and you will see those values into different cells. So you can transfer the files from here, VNC icon, over here, right click, file transfer. So I want to send this log.csv, it's completed, open containing folder, somewhere, where is it, log.csv, open it with Excel and you will see the values coming like this. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you'll be able to create your own data logger as well using this. The link to the code are provided along with this video and try to see how it goes for you. If you don't find it useful, if you find any errors, if you are stuck somewhere, feel free to comment or directly message me. Thank you for watching this video.